Good morning. Thank you for your um, attendance. We are, uh, we have a few more minutes for the arrival of the president and then we will commence. Thank you.
Please, good morning. May I invite you to stand for the arrival of the President of the Republic of Suriname, His Excellency Desi Drano Bautersche, followed by the singing of the national anthem of the Republic of Suriname in his honor. Please remain seated. Standing. Gods and met on Suriname, never have on Zealand land. Who are here, Oxamen? Zijn grond zijn wij verband. Werkend houden we gedachten. Recht en waarheid maken vrij. Al wat goed is te betrachten. Dat geeft aan ons land waarde. Opo kondre mamu opo sranang drome kariu wanso peta tako opo wibu seti kondre u strive strive no sa fre. Please remain standing for a prayer by Suriname's indigenous community.
Today we have arrived at the final day of our deliberations on climate finance for HFLD countries. It is my pleasure to reconfirm the participation of the distinguished delegates and representatives of the Council of Ministers of the Republic of Suriname, the members of the National Assembly, the Minister of State, His Excellency Joseph Harmon and delegation of Guyana the Minister Private Secretary for National Policies to the President, His Excellency Paul August of Nicaragua, the Vice Minister of the Ministry of Environment, His Excellency Jamil Sanchez of Panama, His, the Ambassador, His Excellency Satyendra Persad of Fiji, the Ambassador, His Excellency Antoine Jolie and delegation of the French Republic, the Ambassador, His Excellency Ronald Jamou of Seychelles, the Ambassador, Her Excellency Alfreda Kasimbe Mwamba and Delegation of Zambia, the Delegation of Bhutan, the Delegation of Gabon, the Delegate of Peru, the Delegation of the Dem Democratic Republic of Congo, the Delegation of the Bahamas, the, delegation, the Delegate of the Republic of Congo, the Delegation of Samoa, the Delegation of Sao Tome and Principe, the delegation of Malaysia, 
the resident coordinator for the United Nations, Mrs. Marina Walter and her delegation, the representative of the Holy See, members of the Corps Diplomatique, and representatives of the international organization, other dignitaries, special invitees, representatives of public and private sector, representatives of the media, esteemed guests, ladies and gentlemen. The president will be the chair of this meeting and in his stead, may I please invite a presentation given by the youth of Suriname and one visiting member first will be the presentation by Ms. Kakash, Kikashan Basu, president and founder of the Green Hope Foundation. Ms. Basu, please. Thank you, Gina. It is, I'm so happy to be back in Suriname. It's just like coming home again. July 2010, the worst flooding of a decade caused by the Yangtze River in China, killing over 700 people and destroying over 600,000 homes. The cause, urban construction, destruction of catchment areas, deforestation, and a disruption of the natural balance of fragile ecosystems. August 2017, a catastrophic mudslide in Sierra Leone kills more than 500 people when heavy rainfalls caused mudslides on the deforested slopes of Mount Sugarloaf, about five miles from Freetown. We're at the edge of an environmental breakdown Polar ice caps are melting, sea levels are rising, and unseasonal storms and tsunamis are battering our planet. It is as if nature is finally saying that our time is up and is hitting back. Time and again, our frailty is exposed when confronted with nature's fury. But instead of taking note, the human race continues to raise virgin rainforests, burning fossil fuels that choke our skies, and having industry spew millions of tons of chemicals that poison our oceans, rivers, and lakes. It is our future that is at stake, and it is time for young people to take the leadership role in stopping this environmental degradation and create the future we want. Good morning, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Gehekusha, I'm 18 years old, and I am truly honored to speak to you today as the voice of future generations. Every young person has the capability of being a change maker. All we need is an opportunity. The 2018 IPCC report clearly states that this is the final call for all of us. However, the world cannot achieve its targets without actions from individuals. You, me, everyone. This is no longer remote science or something for just governments to take actions on. It requires collective action at all levels. It requires a change in lifestyle a change in consumption patterns, and most importantly, a change in mindset. We, children and youth, are amongst the largest sectors of civil society, and 87% of us live in developing nations. We are also the fastest growing sector of civil society, and yet we continue to face challenges to our development. There exists a huge opportunity gap that continues to widen every day. And our engagement and empowerment is therefore critical to the success of sustainable development, especially in terms of environmental conservation. And this is the vision of Green Hope Foundation, 
a social innovation enterprise, which I founded in 2012, to enable young people to be the drivers of environmental conservation and become the catalysts of change in their local communities. We use education for sustainable development as a transformative tool, since that holds the key to empowering young people. And we connect STEM and STEAM with environmental conservation. I developed an advocacy tool, which I named Environment Academy, which is essentially a workshop organized by children for children. And we have hosted over 150 academies in over 25 countries to date, directly educating more than 20,000 young people. And we use creative ways like art, dance, music, drama, and sports to reach out to these children. And we complement our academies with ground level actions. For example, planting more than 20,000 trees all over the world. Mangrove conservation is very close to our hearts. Hence, we've planted more than 2,000 mangroves in the Middle East, in the Sundarbans, which is the largest mangrove forest of the world, and here in Suriname. Our members go door to door spreading awareness about the importance of environmental conservation. They've distributed solar lamps across villages in India, Bangladesh, Nepal. We work on protecting endangered marine species such as turtles and have conducted turtle rehabilitation campaigns in the UAE, in Oman and in the Sundarbans. Now, it is extremely important for us to engage the marginalized sections of the world, especially the marginalized children, because their empowerment is key to the success of sustainable development. Green Hope believes in leaving no one behind and achieving a life of dignity for all. And hence, we engage the marginalized children from the Syrian refugee camps, from the Rohingya refugee camps, the children of the prisoners and HIV positive children in Nepal, and the children from war torn Sudan who have now sought refuge in Malaysia. And through our environment academies, we explain to them how they can take environmental actions in their own zones of influence, turning them into environmental guardians who are now making huge ground level impacts. Now, one of the greatest threats to environmental stability is war and strife and the threats to global peace as a consequence of the escalating nuclear arms race. Critical resources are being diverted to build weapons of mass destruction instead of being used to solve the world's most pressing problems, such as education, healthcare, youth empowerment, environmental conservation, creating jobs. Peace is therefore the most important ingredient for sustainable development, the empowerment of us young people, and for making a better order wherein young people can define their own destiny and create a world where economic progress, the society, and the environment achieve a harmonious balance. It is now time for us to take action. Our forests are turning into deserts. Pollution is destroying our rivers and oceans pushing thousands of species to the brink of extinction. We are running out of clean drinking water and the impacts of climate change have given rise to a new term, climate refugees. Millions of people have been displaced and have lost their homes and livelihoods as a direct consequence of climate change and environmental degradation. Look at these contrasting images. On the left is beautiful green Suriname. And on the right is a hot, desolate, barren, parched land 
without a twig of grass or greenery in sight. That landscape, which looks like it's from Mars, actually exists on Earth a few thousand miles away. It is the run of Kutch in India. These little girls in the picture don't go to school. They don't have shoes and therefore walk with bare feet across the hot and rocky soil. So I ask you, what kind of future are these little girls looking forward to? The answer to that lies within each and every one of us. Every country in the world will look like the run of Kutch if we don't take actions right now. The dream of a sustainable world will be realized only when we bridge the gap between the haves and the have-nots. It will be realized when all genders have equal rights, when everyone has access to education. I call upon the youth to understand that protecting our environment is no longer a choice. It is a responsibility. We must preserve the last remaining forest resources of our planet in the HFLD countries. We are the last generation that has the opportunity to take actions before it is too late. History will either remember us for preserving our planet or condemn us for our complacence and indifference. So rise up and take actions to preserve and conserve our planet for future generations. If you do not, then the alternate scenario is absolutely terrifying. This is the picture of a little girl, Mehendi. She is a five-year-old Rohingya refugee child living with more than a million people in cramped, dismal conditions in Kutubalong, the world's largest refugee camp, situated in Bangladesh, where I spent last Christmas with my team. Together, we planted several saplings as a mark of hope for the future. Do we not owe it to our children and grandchildren to leave them a world as pristine and lush as the one that we inherited? Remember the words of Pope John Paul II, who once said, the earth will not continue to offer its harvest except with faithful stewardship. We cannot say we love the land and then take steps to destroy it for use by future generations. We, the youth, are the citizens of today and tomorrow. But we will not live to see our tomorrow if our today is not taken care of. So let us shake off this veil of complacency and indifference and act with decisiveness to safeguard the rights of future generations. If not for yourself, then do it for your children. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Basso, for those inspiring words. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, may I invite um, Matai Samuel to give his message? Hi, I'm Matai. I have been a citizen of Suriname all my life. I have breathed clean air every day because Suriname consists of 93% of green forest, which along with the rest of the Amazon provide a fifth of the world's oxygen. I can see trees in almost every direction I look. We don't have the blue waters sought by so many 
we don't have that many white beaches either. Instead, we have seven large clear water rivers, home to more than 60 species of endemic fish. Furthermore, we have four dynamic beaches where four species of sea turtles, all endangered, lay their eggs, traveling from as far as Canada. Dark waters, which are rich in minerals and therefore good for health and recreational purposes. We have 11 indigenous and 12 maroon tribes, which all have their own way of conserving nature. Our flora is a collection of medicinal herbs and plants. In Kwamala Samutu, a village where the indigenous Tirio people live, there is a shaman that heals cancer, hernia, all kinds of bacterial infections and more. Many health tourists don't even visit Paramaribo, but go straight to our interior and don't even come to Paramaribo and leave again. It doesn't cost much. The treatment is less than the ticket itself. Knowledge above greed. Suriname has 17 nature reserves, all containing unique species. Even Mike Tyson visited Suriname in 2016, not to hold a grand showdown. He went bird watching in our interior. He even let one of his own birds compete in a songbird competition at our independent square. He came in second, unique to the rest of the world, is the cock of the rock, an orange iridescent bird that can easily spot it in our interior. Because of our many fascinating species, Suriname is known to a large group of bird watchers to be a paradise sheltered from the rest of the world, the best kept secret of the Amazon. But all these wonderful things, the things the environment I'm growing up in consists of will disappear if business as usual continues. Once lush green landscapes are now barren of deforestation because of deforestation and mining for gold saturating the soils and rivers in these areas. This is happening in our reserves too. The sand of the beaches where the sea turtles lay their eggs and they too were born is excavated. The eggs are dug up, sold and eaten. Islands of plastic forming in the world's many oceans and growing larger each day. And since plastic does not biodegrade, it just breaks down into microplastics. Sea turtles think plastic bags or kelp or jellyfish Whales believe it to be squid, all heading towards a slow and painful death. Fish think microplastics are plankton. That fish ends up on your plate. Mother Earth is dying. Why can no one else hear her crying? I do. I'm standing here right now. Earth is our common home for all the people, every person, and all of mankind. Just remember, choice, chance, and change. You will have to make a choice to take a chance if you want anything to change. Mother Earth was given to us. Let's value her beauty so our children's children, my children's children, can experience this wonderful beauty as well. I need you, all of you, to gain consciousness of the road that lies ahead. It will take all of us to right the wrongs we have collectively done. Awareness should be our culture and nature our business card for cultural diplomacy. Thank you, Mr. Samuel. <laughs> now, while the stage is uh, being made ready for the introductory remarks of the uh, President, His Excellency, I would like to please give you some information on our crafts and jewelry that we have in Suriname. You may have noticed that I have been wearing these lavish pieces of seed jewelry the last few days. They're not mine, I have to say. 
But <laughs> they have been loaned to me by this little shop uh, along the street here. But I just wanted to give you some more information on the seed jewelry. Um, it's called seed jewelry or botanical jewelry. And this specific jewelry that I've been wearing has been made by Trio Indians, Trio Indigenous group. They're an indigenous community living in the mostly southern border with Brazil, um, specifically of the, the tribe of uh, uh, the village of Kwamalasamutu. And these eight families that make these uh, jewelry and they can comfortably live, live off the of the um, income that they generate from this jewelry. Um, next to their own creations, we also have special pieces. They also have special pieces that are, that are created in collaboration with other designers. So, Kwamala Samutu, or yes, it's written in different uh, languages, is a village located at the river Sipaliwini in the district Sipaliwini in the south of Suriname near the border of Brazil. Yes. So um, hereby we would like to have a short break of five minutes while they continue setting up and then we will return. We will continue. Thank you. Yes, please do not wander off too far because we will not be breaking for very long. Please. <laughs> because I see everybody standing up. Please. Dat scherm een beetje naar boven. Ja, honderd. Nee, eentje.
Please take your seats. Please take your seats.
Please be seated. 